how can we have a tax, the only annual tax we have on property values, where some people in modest houses pay more, a lot more, than someone in a hundred million pound penthouse? It makes very little sense and we're here because of historical accident. It's time it was looked at. That's what one British tax lawyer makes of council tax, and it's an opinion shared by numerous financial experts. The Institute for Fiscal Studies has labelled the current system absurd, while the Institute for Government has called it incredibly poorly designed. But why is it so controversial, and does it need reform? Council tax, as we know it today, was introduced in 1993 under the John Major government. It was done in response to the hugely unpopular poll tax introduced by Margaret Thatcher, which sparked riots across the UK. Council tax is a tax on property and helps pay for local services like rubbish collections, libraries and schools. Houses are split into different categories known as bands. Scotland and Wales have their own bands, but in England there are eight of them from A to H, with band A houses worth the least, up to £40,000, and band H the most, more than £320,000. The higher the band, the higher the rate of tax, with each council setting their own rates. But there's a problem. The band your house falls into is based on the value of the property in 1991, not today's price. Here's that British tax lawyer again. Since then, two things have happened. First of all, there's been a massive explosion in house prices, particularly in the South East, particularly in London, particularly in prime London. The second thing that's happened is that the valuation basis of a council tax was never changed. Politicians are terrified of changing council tax. Some people will pay more, they will be angry, and therefore when your house is valued and put in one of these bands for council tax purposes, it's valued using a kind of imaginary time travel that looks at what its valuation would be in 1991. That's bonkers. So, two houses could be tens or even hundreds of thousands of pounds apart in value today, but remain in the same tax band because they had the same value more than three decades ago. Council tax also differs around the country. Some of the cheapest council tax is in London, including boroughs like Westminster, which has some of the most expensive property in the country. That's because councils that have a population with greater reliance on public services need to raise more money to fund them. This gives us a system where places like Nottingham, Hartlepool or Liverpool end up paying two and a half times what people in Westminster do. That effect is then made worse by the fact there's only eight bands. So let's say you live in a hundred million pound penthouse in Westminster. You will pay the top rate of council tax in Westminster, which is just under £2,000. Say, on the other hand, you live in a very average semi in Blackpool. You will pay about £3,000. So that's mad. So, what changes could the government make? Well, the Labour-run Welsh government plans to overhaul the tax system in Wales in 2028. During the general election campaign, Labour said they would not change England's council tax banding if they won. But there have been unconfirmed reports the government could replace the banding system altogether in favour of a 0.5% tax on the value of a property per year. Although some experts warn this model discourages people from making home improvements. Economists at the Institute for Government suggest basing the amount people pay on the value of the land, not the building on it. There are also calls from some council chiefs for better redistribution of cash between local authorities, so that those with greater costs aren't passing it on to residents. Changes to taxation often produce winners and losers, but the current system is widely considered most beneficial for the very wealthy.